I'm Carrie, and this is Student Loan Chit Chat. What I want to go over are just a couple short things. This is just going to be a really quick voiceover. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is the eight remaining payments that I was notified that I had left in order to reach the 120 payments and 10 years service for um, public service work. And in my case, that is being an educator. So what I want to show you is that the May 2022 notice that I got showed that I had basically eight months left. Projected payoff was May 2023. You can see here that I also had completed 112 qualifying payments. Well, a few months later, by the end of July 2022, I did receive the notice that I have no more payments owed. This is a snapshot of what the screen looks like when you have no more payments owed. You'll see that I've actually made two extra payments. So I've actually gone above the 120 payment required. So in this case, under the Temporary Expanded Public Service Loan Forgiveness Waiver, I've made 122 qualifying payments. And you can see that there's a dash for the representation that I don't owe any more qualifying payments. And, of course, the estimated eligibility date has now been changed from May 2023 to not applicable, as I am now eligible. I'm waiting for the final letter to come. I have been notified that my loan has been transferred to Mohila, um, and I think it'll be there about September 15th of this year. I also put in a call to Fed Loan, so I'll just save everybody a really long hour on hold because I was on hold for about 45 minutes to almost an hour. Basically, here is the situation with Fed Loan that will help many of you guys. Once you have reached your 120 payments, so once your letter looks like this, where it says PSLF qualifying payments, there should be a dash. The estimated date for eligibility should say NA for not applicable. Once you have gotten this letter, you need to contact your service provider because you still need to submit a request for full loan forgiveness. So make sure you've checked with your serv service provider by the time you get this letter. Don't just get this letter and put it away, but you need to make sure that they're actually now aware that, hey, yes, you've made your 120 payments. Now you can wait for the final letter. But what they basically told me is because the education department is rather backed up, especially with the October deadline coming in this 2022, they said it could be, and I'm quoting from Fed Loan, it could be, even though it's supposed to be 30 to 60 days, they said it could be a few month extension beyond that before we get our final closing letter that shows zero balance and all has been forgiven and, and is right with the world, okay? So they said even though it's normally 30 to 60 days, she said it could even push, she doesn't think it will, but it could push even into 2023. Now then, here's the part that affects us that are waiting for our final forgiveness letter. What happens if worst case scenario, what happens if 2023 comes around Payments are owed up again in February. What do we do? Because we've met our 120 payments and we have the paperwork to show it. I was told by Fed Loan, and I assume it won't change any with Mohila, you simply go on forbearance. You're already on forbearance now, really, whether you wanted it or not. Of course, I can assume that most of us wanted it, okay, because all of this forbearance time has counted towards our payment. But let's just say, in my case, um, they're really backed up with paperwork, as we know the education department is, and February comes around, and I still don't have my final forgiveness letter, but I have this uh, documentation showing, look, I've made my 120 payments. In fact, I'm two payments over. All I've been instructed to do, if that does happen, is just to simply request a forbearance, and it will push it until... I get my final letter. So I was told, do not panic if for some reason you don't get your final letter. Um, we can imagine how busy the education department is now, especially with the ten and twenty thousand um, dollar relief payments being applied to people's loans as well. So they are pretty well backed up. They don't think it'll take that long, but like I said, I waited on hold for forty five minutes. And thought I would share that information with you so you don't have to wait on hold for 45 minutes e either. You're already in forbearance. 
but you know, worst case comes to worst, February comes around and we're still waiting for our final letter. Okay. Um, she said, just simply request a forbearance extension and it will be granted to you. But it's very important that you save documentation of your letter showing that you have made the payments, especially as they're going from Fed loan to Mahila. The other thing I want to do really quickly before closing this out is I just want to remind people what this temporary expanded public service loan forgiveness waiver includes. And it is really, really important. The October 31st deadline is coming. I don't think it's going to be expanded. I think there's so much going on right now. Um, if we're talking in terms of politics and all of that, I, I just don't see expansion. I've followed the uh, student loan trends really closely. I've not heard anything about expanding the time frame. Believe me, if I hear anything, um, I will certainly let you know. But it's really important that you get your applications in, your loans consolidated. I'm, even though they're saying till October 31st, if there's any way you can get it done earlier, I would. And part of the reason also is by having it done earlier, it kind of helps, you know, make sure that you're grandfathered in that. Yes, we received your paperwork. You were already in the process, you know, yada, yada. All right. So let's take a couple of quick reminders, lest anyone have forgotten or I might not think it's worth it. I'm telling you it's worth it. So let's look real quickly here about the limited PSLF waiver for those that might just be hearing about it for the first time. I got this from Mohila. And as you know, Fed loan is changing to Mohila. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to leave it up here on the screen, but I'm also going to read it out uh, loud in case anyone's not able to look at the screen. So here we go. New rules under the limited PSLF waiver until October 31st. By the way, these are the rules that have been in place since October 31st last year. But I can't assume that everybody in my audience has heard about it. So here it is. All right. This is the limited um, PSLF waiver. You are receiving credit for periods of free payment on direct FFEL, which is also the Federal Family Education Program loans or Perkins loans. Any prior, okay, next point, point two. Any prior period of repayment will count as a qualifying payment as long as that payment was made after October 1st, 2007. And as we know, that's the deadline, excuse me, that's the starting date because that's when the program went into effect. So anything that you did in public service prior to October 1st does not count as part of this. But from October 1st, 2007 on, it can qualify. Periods of repayment on loans. Point three, excuse me. Periods of repayment on loans before consolidation count, even if paid late or less than the amount due. This is huge because, um, as you know from my prior videos, they I talked about. You know, they said I paid late even though I had a two week grace period. So several payments did not count. Well, under this temporary waiver, all of those payments counted, and I guarantee that's what helped push me to a one hundred twenty payment amount. Okay. Or even if it was less than the amount due. So this again, only is qualifying until October 31st this year. After that, you know, um, none of those temporary waiver bonuses like this count. A point one, two, point four. You can get forgiveness even if you are not employed or employed by a qualifying employer at the time of application and forgiveness. This is huge. Again, this only falls under the temporary waiver. The way it's been is that, yes, you met your 120, you met your 10 years. However, you had to still stay in that job until you were forgiven. So you had to be in the job at the time of application and you had to be in the job when they officially said you are blessed with forgiveness. Under this temporary waiver, however, they are not requiring they are not requiring that. You don't have to be in the job now. You don't even have to be in the job at application time. So this is huge. But that again goes away October 31st, 2022. So just in a few weeks. And then Point five, if you got teacher loan forgiveness, the period of service that led to your eligibility will count toward PSLF if you certify employment for PSLF for that period. So these are the five um, waivers. These are big deals, especially, like I said, you know, with the things about the you know, you paid late, you paid under, maybe you weren't in a job at the time of forgiveness or at the time of application. They were all just these, you know, in my opinion, ridiculous, ridiculous technicalities. All right. And then let's just refresh really quickly. 
These are the unchanged rules of public service loan forgiveness. These rules did not change at all. Point one, credit is only for periods of repayment after October 1st, 2007, since that is when the PSLF program began. All right, so we've covered that already. Point two, periods of deferment or forbearance, not including the COVID-19 forbearance and periods of default do not qualify. Again, this is why you want to get in that uh, temporary expanded public service loan forgiveness waiver before October 31st. All right. Um, also. People who may be new to this information, all this forbearance time we have, we've had in COVID-19 has all counted towards your 120, all of it. Point three, you must make 120 qualifying payments or the equivalent. So none of that changes. Again, just a reminder, these are all of the unchanged rules. Being employed by a government, obviously, you have to be not for profit or other not-for-profit organization that provides a qualifying service. This is really important. You need to remember, it's it's not enough to just work um, in not-for-profit, okay? And it's not even enough to necessarily work in government, although I assume most government jobs will qualify. But those not-for-profit positions can get really touchy. So you need to make sure that the not-for-profit job you're in actually is in a qualifying service job. Okay, so you can be a not-for-profit, but if that particular line of work doesn't count as a service job, then unfortunately, there's no public service loan forgiveness on that. All right, next point, you need to be working full-time. I think that's pretty standard. Next point, having direct loans or consolidating into direct loans. Again, they need to be with the federal government, and this is why you need to get them consolidated. If they are not yet consolidated, into a direct loan um, by October 31st, you may miss out. And that could be on tens of thousands of dollars. Um, let's see, second to, last, second to last point, certifying qualifying employment for the periods of time for which you want credit toward PSLF. Um, that's the employer verification form. Takes about five minutes to fill out. It's two pages. Your employer signs one page, you sign the other page. It's really short, really simple. If you go into Google, just type in employer verification form and I guarantee you it will pull up. Otherwise, contact your loan service provider. And then finally, no big surprise here, Parent PLUS loans are not eligible, at least not at this time under the limited PSLF waiver. I don't know if it's going to necessarily stay that way, but as of this time, Parent PLUS is not eligible under the limited PS PSLF waiver. However, there are rumors and some rumblings that there might be in the future some sort of relief for Parent PLUS loans. I'll be keeping my eyes open on that as well. So that's pretty much it. Um, again, remember Fed loan is changing to Mohila and please, please, if you have not applied yet for the temporary expanded public service loan forgiveness, please get your application in. I would not count on it being extended. If it does get extended, I'll let you know, but I definitely, definitely would not count on it. I'm Carrie. This is Student Loan Chit Chat. Don't forget to subscribe and have a great night.